Draft Profile Series brought to you by Celtics.com. Welcome to the Celtics.com Draft Profile Series. And now joining us over Skype is Kentucky beat writer Jerry Tipton from the Lexington Herald Leader. Jerry, thank you so much for coming on today. My pleasure. You had an opportunity to cover the Kentucky Wildcats this past season, but let's focus specifically on power forward Trey Lyles. What areas of his game really stood out to you? Well, the first thing that uh, comes to mind is uh, that he played out of position for a, a good bit uh, because Kentucky had so many big guys, Carl Anthony Towns, Willie Cauley-Stein, uh, Dakari Johnson, to find playing time for Trey, they uh, they played him at small forward, and uh, you know he he had his size to take advantage of that of matchups, but uh, the quickness of other teams' uh, small forwards uh, could be a problem for him. So so I uh, everyone tells me that uh, when he gets to the NBA, he will move to his more natural position of power forward. So you know, I, and we'll get a better look at what he can do. I think in that in that kind of setting. With Trey being able to adjust to a new position, how much did you think that sparked not only head coach's interest, but also general managers? Well, you know, yes. I mean, I think any kind of versatility is always good. And, uh, you know, he, the, there were times, and I think he went into this season wanting to show some versatility. Uh, his, his jump shooting, facing the basket, and doing things other than uh, posting up, because uh, as you know, Kentucky had plenty of posting up. Uh, people, so that it wasn't needed, and I think he, he uh, I think he liked the idea of showing a, a more versatile game than just a low post guy. You were there day, day in and day out. What did you see that adjustment for him when he was practicing? Well, he was a, you know, we I saw the uh, the media doesn't go to as many practices as you might think, but we did see him, uh, and he didn't play on the. Uh, exhibition tour of the Bahamas in August, which was the, the prime time we got to watch them practice. He was ill. And uh, so he, he, he kind of had a, he was kind of set back by that. But, but as the season went along, he did more and more, uh, and he showed more and more. There was a play, I believe it was against Cincinnati in the NCAA tournament, where he was, uh, he, he sort of got the ball on the perimeter and started backing down his defender. And when he got into the lane, he just kind of exploded to the basket and dunked left-handed. He, he, and he's right-handed. And that really caught my eye because I, at least uh, even here at Kentucky, we don't see that a lot. And I, sh and I thought that showed uh, more explosion than maybe he had shown in other settings during the season, that there was more there than we had seen. Trey is one of seven Wildcats entering the draft. Just how competitive did it get there? Well, it was, you know, the thing that was striking about it, Amanda, was that, uh, as you know, they played platoons. And from the very beginning, you, uh, you didn't get the sense that they were competing necessarily uh, on the court, if you know what I mean. They weren't competing against each other. They were playing with each other in the two units. And then when they got mixed uh, during uh, uh, other parts of the season, uh, during the season, uh, everyone seemed to handle that well. Now, what we heard from the players was that in the practice sessions, they they were competing. You know, they weren't as gentlemanly there. And uh, it, it has to be a benefit for all concerned to be pushed on a regular basis in practices. And you just mentioned that true grit that Trey had, but what other areas do you think he might be able to improve upon a little bit more leading up to the draft? Well, I think he's got to be uh, show more agility, I would say, and uh, and and become a better shooter, a perimeter shooter, or face the basket shooter. Uh, again, uh, I felt like we got a skewed view of things because of uh, how he was played as a small forward. Not always, but a good bit. And uh, and of course, he had uh, th th there were two. He missed the games in the Bahamas, so that set him back probably a little bit. And then he had uh, uh, strep throat in the middle of the season where he, he missed three or four games. That, that probably set him back too. But, but you know, he, he's an obvious talent. I don't think there's any question about that. And he got better as the season went along. All right, Jerry, well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. 
Thank you. Make sure to stay right here on Celtics.com for more player profiles leading up to June 25th. I'm Amanda Flugrad. Thanks for watching.